Hey guys, here's another quick tip in uh, Photoshop for you regarding clipping masks. And I know a lot of people already know what clipping masks are, but I think there's a ton of people out there that have no idea or have maybe never even heard of clipping masks and are basically missing a really powerful tool from their workflow. And so you'll see what we have here is this truck separated from the background. And so what we can do is just create a new layer over here and to create a clipping mask, you just right click this and go down to create clipping mask. Or if you hold alt and option between the two layers and just click, you'll see it clips it. And so what this is going to do is confine everything that we do in this new layer to the one below it. And so you can paint with really broad strokes and it'll keep everything to that layer. And you can see if we unclip this, we are painting outside of it, but if we clip it back, it stays within that layer. And you're probably already thinking of a lot of ways you could use this that'd be really useful, but we'll just do this dirt really quick and show you how it can work. And so we'll just paint some of this dirt and sand into the lower area of the truck. You know, and you can color pick it and, you know, put some darker spots in there and just spend a minute or two uh, dirtying things up. And you'll see it doesn't look very good yet because we need to do one more thing. And that's come in here double click this layer and you'll get the layer styles palette. In the blend if area in the underlying layer spot you'll see you have these two um, carrots, you know, the dark one and the light one. And what this does is it punches out our layer based on the dark areas below it. And likewise with the light it'll punch out those light areas based on the layer below it. And so if we just hold alter option we can split this carrot and you'll see you'll get a much nicer fade which gives us the illusion of um, those shadow areas in there. And so we can just play with this for a second until we're kind of happy with the way it's looking. And you'll see that dirt in there looks a lot more natural now. And we can sort of play with it and erase it and um, paint into it a little bit more. You know, in certain areas of the truck, you may need to color pick a lighter, a lighter sand. Because down here, it's going to be a little bit more saturated. Up here, it might be a little bit more bluish and lighter because of the lighting. And just keep painting into that until you get something that you're kind of happy with. you know. And in the windshield area here, we could even just erase this out to make it look like the windshield wiper blades have been doing their job. You know, which adds a little bit of realism to something like this. You know, and if you uh, need to lighten some areas up, you can just use like the dodge and burn tool. In these areas we'll burn this in there a little bit and then in this rim maybe we need to lighten that up just a little bit to add a little bit more realism to it you know you could spend all day doing this but this is just a, a quick primer on things you can do with clipping masks and so what you can also do with clipping masks that's really powerful besides just painting into a layer is that you can have multiple layers um, in your image and say you want to do an adjustment layer on one but you don't want it to be permanent so like let's say we'll turn this off for a second and you want to do a color balance on this guy and sort of changes colors a little bit in the image but now that you've applied that it's a permanent change to it and so what you can do instead we'll just unclip this sand layer for a second and we'll just say come in here and do a color balance layer and right now if we start adjusting this you'll see it adjusts our entire image but now if we turn this and clip it whoops and clip it to the layer below it those adjustments will stay within that layer and you can have as many of these adjustments as you want on top there confined solely to that layer below and i've had instances where i've had literally 15 or 20 different um adjustment layers clipped to something and that's probably overkill and that's me sort of experimenting with looks and things like that but you can do it and so we'll just get rid of those really quick and then we'll clip our sand back here and look at our dirty truck and um, another interesting thing you can do with this is we'll unclip this really quick and we'll duplicate our truck move this copy behind we'll turn that off and we'll just size this guy down and put him in the foreground a little bit and the guy behind size him down a little bit further and move him back and we'll just move this guy over to cover that background area so now we have those two trucks in here and if we click both of these we can group them into a single group and what's really cool about this now we can take this dirt layer that we made and then we can clip it to the group as well instead of just a single layer and so now we can come back in here and erase out some of that dirt but you'll see that the dirt is covering both of our layers as opposed to just the one and this is really useful too because we can come in and do the same thing with our adjustment layers and we'll do like a levels layer here and we can adjust the levels on 
the entire group globally without having to clip a separate levels layer to each of these things or a separate dirt layer to each of these things. So this gives you a lot of non-destructive flexibility in terms of adding details or dirt or color corrections to a whole bunch of layers at once inside your image. And there's, um, there's a million different ways you can use this. Adding dirt and color corrections is just one way. You could add textures, you could add patterns, all sorts of different ways you can use this. And maybe in the future I'll uh, show some more examples. But uh, hopefully this is useful for you and have fun.